Today, a jury found former President Donald Trump liable for sexually abusing a writer and defaming E. G. Carroll back in 1996. A jury also awarded Carroll $5 million. Carroll had also accused Trump of raping her. The jury, though, did not find him liable for that. They did find him liable for the rest of the counts, though. The defamation argument came from Trump denying her claims. Trump's attorneys brought no witnesses during their defense. Trump himself, of course, did not testify. And the jury only took a few hours to reach a unanimous verdict. Carroll did not say anything after the courtroom exited today. Trump blasted the verdict, though, on social media. He called the verdict a disgrace. A police officer in Aurora has retired before the department could fire her. Julie Sankey will keep her police certification and could still become an officer in another department. She was convicted late last year of violating an order of protection stemming from an alleged domestic violence incident. Nine News reporter Matt Jablow is following the story and he joins us with more. Matt? Kim, this all started in November of 2021 when Aurora police officer Julie Stankey was charged with assault and disturbing the peace after a dispute involving Stanky's estranged spouse. Court documents say the two were in the middle of a divorce. Days later, Denver police arrested Stanky a second time for violating a restraining order after she went to the house where she and her spouse had been living to retrieve her truck. Late last year, a judge found Stanky guilty of violating the restraining order and sentenced her to one year of supervised probation. The judge dropped the assault charge against Stanky. Then, about two weeks ago, the Aurora Police Department's Internal Affairs Bureau presented the results of its investigation to Interim Chief Art Acevedo, who placed Stanky on paid administrative leave and advised her that he planned to fire her. Stanky's pre-disciplinary hearing was scheduled for 1 o'clock last Tuesday, but a little more than an hour before that hearing, she submitted a written notice of retirement. Kim? All right. Interesting follow-up. Thank you, Matt. I want to tell you right now about a small wildland fire. It's burning in Grand County, southeast of Steamboat Springs. And the Grand County Sheriff's Office says it began with some hay bales that caught fire, but then spread to nearby Sage. Highway 40 is currently closed westbound at Highway 134 and eastbound at milepost 164. That as long as crews are there assessing the situation. No doubt Coloradans will remember this storm. It was six years ago this week when hail, the size of baseballs, beat up cars and home. the homes. It became the costliest hailstorm in the state's history. Oh, that was a good day. Eh, not really. Uh, we'll look back on that moment in a little bit, but we do want to warn you, guess what? We could see severe storms tonight and tomorrow. So far, it's been all sunny and beautiful, but do not let that fool you because things are going to change and there is a chance for large hail. Let's get right to Danielle Grant to check on that storm threat. Oh, yeah, yeah, you guys. As we look ahead toward tonight into tomorrow, the news not ideal, especially for folks that are going to be out and about driving around because we have to look out not just for large hail, but also some damaging winds out there. Incredibly heavy rains. Plus, from the high country, we're going to be looking at snowfall coming through. Incredibly heavy snow. All of this is wild when you have a view like this, right? Beautiful across downtown Denver today. Temperatures are sitting in the mid 70s currently downtown, low 80s in Fort Collins, even up into the foothills and 50s and 60s. The winds have started to pick up a bit and they'll be ushering in a few more changes. As we look at our severe thunderstorm risk, much of the urban corridor off to the eastern side of the state still under a marginal threat for seeing severe weather late tonight into early tomorrow morning. This includes the I-25 corridor, I-76, I-70, but the threat tomorrow will be even greater. As we look out there tonight, you'll notice a few clouds starting to form up in the foothills. We'll zoom in and maybe one or two trying to sneak off the foothills into Larimer County, but we have not seen anything just yet. It's going to take some time before we see these thunderstorms really firing up like what we have going on in Wyoming right now. As we look at the future cast, it's late, 1 a.m. This is when I pause the clock and you can kind of see those strong storms tracking to the northeast around Fort Collins into Weld County. It's these storms that have the potential for bringing us some large hail late tonight. Tomorrow morning we wake up to the cloud cover, still plenty of moisture out there, and that's going to help be fuel almost for these thunderstorms that will once again be cruising in for us tomorrow. Not only thunderstorms, but the potential for seeing some tornadoes and land spouts too. This is the threat as we look ahead toward tomorrow with a slight risk. We'll elevate that tomorrow here for the Denver area and much of eastern Colorado. Lightning hail all going to be possible late tonight. Once again, another round of severe storms on deck for us. And plus that mountain snow, we could potentially be measuring it in feet. We'll talk more about that. Go over the timeline of Wednesday and Thursday coming up in a few minutes.
Thank you, Danielle. We turn to Aurora, where police are investigating a shooting that sent two men to the hospital. It happened near the Aurora Hills Golf Course just a little after 11 a.m. today. APD at this point say they don't believe that anyone else was involved other than the two men. We still don't know how they're doing at this time, and the cause of the shooting is now under investigation. About a thousand migrants have arrived in Denver over the last five days. The movement was expected as the immigration rule known as Title 42 is expected to expire on Thursday. But those individuals aren't just coming from the border. An increase in migrants are still being released from the ICE detention facility in Aurora. Casa de Paz, a nonprofit, small nonprofit, says that the numbers have been rising over the last couple of weeks. Yesterday alone, they saw 40 people released. That's compared to one or two people on previous Mondays. Casa de Paz executive director says lately the detention facility has started releasing on weekends and at sporadic times. She says the second group of people released yesterday happened at 9 o'clock at night, leaving a large group of people in the dark and lost. So, yeah, so we have to adjust a lot to kind of what the detention center decides to do. Um, and, and that can be a little frustrating, but we're happy when people are released. We're happy to, you know, welcome people here. It just that they sometimes make it harder for us to, to logistically accomplish things. Custapa says that a lot of people released have plans to go to other states, so really their primary focus is helping them get there. They're desperately looking for volunteers to drive these individuals to bus stations or airports and to get them where they want to go.